we know grief is going to make us sad, but it's grief's big presence in our life that also needs to be accounted for. The 2024 Cost of Dying report has just been released, and today I want to comment on some of the findings. The report is from the United States, so the statistics and the dollars are all American-based. I will post the link to the full report if you care to read more in my comments below. I'm Joe McRogers, a grief therapist dedicated to doing grief differently. Today you will see that this report tells us that we need to do grief differently. Grief needs a revolution. Join our grief evolution. First, we're going to speak about finances, the costs of death. Benjamin Franklin stated, but in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Well, there is a cost to death and you can be sure that it includes taxes. $12,616, the average amount spent after a death. The 2024 reports states that families used various sources of funding in order to cover these expenses. 62% used their own personal funds from checking accounts, while 19% were forced to take out a bank loan, and 15% borrowed from relatives in order to cover these costs. Those who ended up borrowing money or using credit to cover the costs run the risk of taking on debts that they may never be able to pay off. Second, let's speak about the burden of responsibility in acting as an executor. I hear all the time in my grief sessions how grief is extended and protracted when the loss then holds executive responsibilities. The average family in the survey reported having close to 34 different accounts or subscriptions to tend to, and with over 20% calling the process very difficult. 27% of families noted that canceling credit cards was a particular challenge. Personally, I remember the challenge of canceling health cards, cell phones, and passports. Those were particularly frustrating for me. There's also a financial cost to the fractured focus being an executor. How to grieve, and yet how to think and focus on all the details. And this report revealed that the longer it took people to wind down all of the logistics, the longer it took them to return to their jobs at full capacity and their own full income. The task of becoming an executor affected grieving individuals financially on average for 18 months. Next, let's speak about health and well-being as an executor. This is the cost of responsibility. Executors in this year's survey were more likely than non-executors to experience mental health symptoms associated with grief. While 78% of executors experienced physical issues and a staggering 93% of them had mental health symptoms. Non-executors, on the other hand, reported both these issues, physical and mental health, but in as little as over half. 89% of executors experienced a notable increase in anxiety. 19% reported that that anxiety continued for over a year. And while all who are affected by the loss may experience emotional and physical symptoms, executors or those with responsibilities were more likely to experience issues in their physical health over a longer period of time. These changes included sleep pattern changes, weight loss or weight gain, headaches, panic attacks, and frequent illness. Grief suppresses our immune system. 59% of executors reported that they stopped participating in their usual everyday activities in the wake of their loved one's passing. A quarter of executors lost one or more friendships. This report did try to reflect mental health separately from physical health. And the survey found that 73% of the people who participated experienced at least one mental health symptom for a few weeks. And 58% said that this mental health symptom persisted for a few months. And of that, 15% reported mental health impacts for well over a year's time. Similar time frames were seen with physical symptoms, in which 68% of the respondents reported 
experiencing at least one symptom. Symptoms such as headaches, weight loss, sleep impairment for a few weeks. And then 54% reported that that continued for a few months and 14% reported they continued for over a year. My goal in sharing these results is to say that when left unchecked, all of these symptoms and the costs of grief will often have significant negative impacts on a griever's quality of life, both short-term and long-term. When the families in the survey were asked about these life changes, they found that 84% reported their symptoms having a negative impact on their daily life. And nearly half of the people who answered found themselves stopping their participation in their everyday activities. 35% withdrew from their social circles and 21% became estranged from friends and family members. Grief isolates, alters, and sucks the joy out of relationships and activities. Can any of you identify with these losses that have been reported? They are secondary losses to the primary loss, but they are oh so important to acknowledge. Share in the comments below, please, if you have experienced any of these costs of grief. So I wish to emphasize that these statistics prove it to be true. We need to do grief differently. Hoping and waiting won't do it. Please, I'm encouraging you to seek support an expression of your grief because this report clearly links that our vulnerabilities can last a long time when we are grieving. And as a grief therapist, I have had the privilege to be able to witness that altering your grief is possible. You change it by having a relationship with your grief. Therapy, online courses, grief therapy, peer groups, art therapy, journaling. There are many ways to work at challenging and changing your relationship with your grief. I am refining my monthly memberships and my online self-paced course to do grief differently. So perhaps we're a match to work together. There are many resources out there to support you and your grief. Please do grief differently. And as you find your way with the cost of dying, I send you kind thoughts, kind words, and a kind heart. Thank you and take good care. Thank you.